Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our daily English news edition. I'm Daniel Cook, your host, Monday through Saturday, presenting a translated version of today's top news stories. The opposition of Kosovo held another protest today against the agreements with Serbia and Montenegro. The rally was joined by thousands of citizens and the leaders of the opposition parties who pledged to continue protesting until the government falls. The leader of the Alliance for the Future of Kosovo, Ramush Haradinaj, had this to say. The government is imprisoning the opposition. They are telling the friends of Kosovo that the opposition is not to be trusted. This government must leave power immediately so that the corruption will end and our country can regain sovereignty, said Haradinaj. The chairman of the Initiative for Kosovo, Fatmir Limay, spoke as well. The people of Kosovo are protesting because this government has violated the Constitution, he said. Kosovo is united. Today, Kosovo's government has fallen. We refuse to accept rulers who violate our Constitution. Our sovereignty has been violated, and we want new elections to overcome this political crisis, said Mr. Limay. The leader of the self-determination movement spoke along the same lines. There was some violent outbreak after the opposition leaders addressed the crowd as some protesters began to throw Molotov cocktails and clash with police officers. The outbreak began with a small group of protesters, some wearing masks, uh, when they started to throw rocks and other objects at the government building. The situation quickly escalated from that point. Some members of the crowd tried to set the building on fire, but the police quickly intervened. Officers were seen spraying tear gas to disperse the crowd, but the conflict only moved from the square out into the streets of Pristina. The president has issued a statement on Facebook condemning the violence. I harshly condemn the vandalizing of public property and the use of means that endanger the lives of Kosovo citizens and police officers, writes President Yahyaga. After reaching an agreement yesterday with the mediation of the foreign ambassadors, the left and right wing experts for justice reform have resumed their work. They agreed on a new method for working jointly on the draft, which will be based on the opinions of the Venice Commission. The deadline for the draft is on Monday. The expert Ghent Ibrahami said today that there are some points in which the parties do not agree. He clarified that if they do not reach a united position on these points, they will end up submitting two separate opinions on the draft. We are identifying which opinions we share and which we do not, he said. The experts have different opinions on a number of issues, and each group will give their own opinion on these topics. We will try to unify our attitudes, but in case we cannot agree, we will send two opinions to the ad hoc commission. However, there will be only one draft, said Ibrahami. While the experts were discussing their method for jointly completing the reform, Prime Minister Rama held a meeting with the Assembly Speaker, Ilir Mehta. The Minister of Justice, Yuli Manjani, also joined them in the last few minutes of the meeting. The Chairman of the Commission for Justice Reform has announced that they will seek the opinion of the Venice Commission a second time on whether the mandate of the Prosecutor General should be interrupted. Mr. Jaffai said that the article that calls for the termination of the Prosecutor General will be discussed once again by the Ad Hoc Commission. Later, they will submit their conclusion to Venice. The amendments that were submitted by the experts say that the mandate of the Prosecutor must be terminated immediately after the adoption of the constitutional package. But Jaffai says that it's up to, the Ven uh, up to Venice to make the final decision. The opinions expressed by the Venice Commission was that the prosecutor's, uh, Prosecutor General's mandate should not be interrupted when the reform takes effect. He should be allowed to stay in office until the end of his mandate, according to Venice. The Minister of Justice, Uli Magnani, took part in a meeting today that was organized by the Union of Prosecutors. The Union gathered today to discuss the proposals for the justice reform, which are supposed to be submitted in a few days' time. Speaking at the meeting, Magnani called the prosecutors to investigate all crimes, including those committed by state officials. He also exhorted them to preserve the confidentiality of the investigation files, reminding them that revealing the secrets of a file before the investigation is finished is unacceptable. He said, the justice reform is the deepest of the state building reforms because the need for this reform is the greatest. Criminal justice plays a, role, uh, plays a role in this reform and my call to the prosecutors is clear. Investigate the cases of every state official accused of abusing their duty, even if he or she is a minister. 
If prosecutors can be deterred by abusive officials, then there is no reform that can fix this system. We must all work together to ensure this reform. You must deal with not only the crime on the streets, but crime in the office as well. If you do this, people will trust the prosecution once again, said Magnani. The head of the Union of Prosecutors also spoke at the meeting. He asked the people to stop using negative labels for prosecutors, saying that this only hampers their work and prohibits justice. The flooded areas of Albania have been recovering since the break of the rain, but more bad weather is expected on Sunday. According to the Ministry of, of Agriculture, there are now only 800 hectares of land that are still underwater. Yesterday, there were 3,500. The Military Weather Service predicts that although there will be rain throughout the country, it will be less intense than it was a few days ago when it flooded hundreds of houses and properties. According to the, late, the latest data of the Ministry of Agriculture, there are 400 hectares of flooded land remaining in Duras and 400 more in Leja. The ministry expects to finish repairing the Shkumbini Riverbank on Saturday. Meanwhile, all pumping stations continue to work at full capacity. The embankments and dams throughout the country are being monitored and precautions are being made to support the weakest areas. The city has begun work on repairing the embankment of the Tirana River where the river has washed it out. According to their action plan, the municipality believes that their efforts will not only repair the banks, but fortify them against future floods. Two days ago, the overflowing Tirana River caused damage to a number of sheds in the Roma community, flooded homes and damaged bridges. The director of Tirana's administrative unit has been overseeing the repairs in the administrative unit number eight as well as other points where the river has destroyed its banks. <clears throat> Starting in February, riding one of the city buses in Tirana will cost 40 lek instead of just 30. The price of season passes will be increased as well, up to 1,800 lek instead of the 1,200 that it was before. It has been announced that season bus passes for students will not be changed. This is thanks to the insistence of the SMI in the city council, who were very persistent against any price increase for students. The council decided to adopt the price increase on December 30th, with only the votes of the majority council members. That's the end of our edition for this evening. Thank you for watching, and please join us again on Monday. We hope you have a great weekend.